طيب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الجمعة الجيدة بكل خير حيثما كنتم نلتقي بكم في هذا الشهر المبارك وهو حيكون أول لقاء وآخر لقاء مثل الروس رمضان يعني وكذا نتمنى أن وضعنا يوفقنا لما فيه الخير في هذا اللقاء ويدينا العلم النافع يعني وينفعنا بما علمنا إن شاء الله طيب أنا حابة وأصلا الشابتر 1 has been covered يعني سأتكلم عن شابتر 1 باسم النادي نادي الكتاب أو كتاب قرأته لأمة إقرأ ودائما يذكرني بالبيت المشهور للخساء بتقول حمال أنوية حمال أنوية حباط أوبية شهاد أنبية للجيش جراو فمن هذا المنطلق نحن إن شاء الله نسعى لأن هذه المنصة تكون منصة لمناقشة ومدارسة بعض الكتب بما فيها الكتب التي تعنى بالترجمة بصفة خاصة والكتب عموما يعني وده العلم يعني الإباء مأمونون يفيدوننا من علمهم علم ما مضى توفيقا ورأيا مسددا طيب very beginning at the very beginning let me thank you those who are attending this session uh, I'm so glad that to see all of you right here right now and this is really a, a honor for me and I'm honored that to have you at this time uh, let me start talking about the chapter one uh, and because we have already tackled this area but right now we are going to give some hints I mean glimpse uh, and hints about uh, this uh, issues. I mean, main issues are uh, translation studies, and these are uh, these are the key concepts. Uh, we tackled this last time, uh, last session. We tackled them. Uh, Miss Nihad and I we covered this area, but right now, just to refreshing as a matter of refreshing and reconditioning the mind. Uh, definition of uh, Translating and interpreting the practice of translating is well established, but the discipline of translation studies is relatively new. In academic circles, uh, translation was uh, previously uh, relegated to just a language learning activity. The split has been persisted between translation practice uh, and theory. The study of usually literary translation began through. Uh, comparative literature translation workshops and constructive analysis. James S. Holmes, the name and the nature of translation studies is considered to be the founding statement of a new discipline. Translation studies has extended hugely and is now often considered an interdisciplinary. So these are the key concepts that we're gonna tackle them quickly and, and because of time. Uh, um, just go through them, I mean, uh, as a matter of scanning. And this is all chapter one. Uh, I mean, what chapter one is about is uh, discussing or discusses what we mean by translation. So we have to ask ourselves. What, what do we mean by translation? Is translation as a matter of rendering the meaning? It's just we are rendering the meaning from uh, L1 to L2, or there are other ways? And what are they? So, or there are, are there any definitions? Uh, this is in terms of translation. So, uh, so what, what do we mean by a translator? Uh, the one who's translating this, is it as a matter of rendering the meaning too? or whose job is learning the meaning? Or what do you think about the, the notion that says 
the translator is the creator. Do you agree with that? Do you agree with that or you don't agree? Okay, so these are basics that uh, is uh, very hard to be discussed, okay? Uh, and what this cup uh, is of the discipline of translation studies, it discusses the three types of translation defined by Jacobson. Interlingual, uh, and as for me, uh, as for me, I already discussed this area, but right now let's discuss it once again as just a matter of uh, scanning, okay? Uh, when we say interlingual, that means it does mean that within within the language. Uh, for example, interlingual. Uh, for example, if I'm using monolingual dictionary, uh, and if I'm reading the the, the old English literature novels or stories or uh, episodes, okay, and I found that very difficult reading them uh, unless to go back and pick up new words from the dictionary. So this is called minilingual translation, uh, intralingual translation, or intra-translation. This is as far as I know. That means from within the language. So this is called uh, uh, intra-translation, or even in Arabic. The standard Arabic is totally different from now. So when we are talking about muallaqat, uh, some people say they are seven, uh, se uh, seven or some uh, people tend to claim that they are ten. So it's so difficult. You need to find a dictionary like Ritan al or or uh, Marjim al so to find the meaning, right? So this is called intertranslation or interlingual. When we are talking about the uh, interlingual, so interlingual, that means uh, across uh, languages. Uh, so when we are talking about translation and intertranslation, look at the, the word nation. So nation, a certain group of people in a center of given community. But when we say uh, intra-translation, that means uh, like international, so across the world. Uh, the last one is called intersemiotic. And this is definitely re reminds me, or let me think clearly about uh, the one of the dictionaries, it's called Al-Ma'ani Dictionary, Al-Ma'ani. There's uh, uh, a motto there. It says that the goal, لِكُلِّ رَسْمٍ مَعْنَى لِكُلِّ رَسْمٍ مَعْنَى And this is called intersemiotic. Yani it, it can be for movies, uh, pictures, uh, portraits, everything that can be translated. Okay? Uh, it then uh, presents the well-known harms and story conceptual map, uh, which we discussed uh, later, uh, earlier. Or which we have already discussed, the map of, uh, of the discipline, and critiques, critique, uh, critique uh, it when the new conceptualization and knowledge structure using the construction of the aligned publications that address the Benjamin translation studies and bibliography. So, uh, this is just an idea about uh, the whole uh, product, uh, uh, the chapter was about. And uh, we hope uh, this is clear. And if there's any questions regarding this, uh, we can talk about it later. Uh, because uh, I don't like to elongate my speech and just um, letting the, the floor for Ms. Tosa uh, to start chapter two. Uh, but this is a hint, or just I'm uh, pinpointing the, the, the great ideas about uh, the general concept about uh, chapter one, uh, and this is uh, all chapter one was about or is about. So, if there's any question regarding the the the, the, the three uh, types of translation, we can talk about them. Uh, we can talk about the translating um, and even the the interpreters uh, and this or uh, correlated. They are intertwined. Uh, as well as the uh, three terms, interlingual, uh, inter, intralingual, interlingual, and intersemiotic. And this is really uh, dated back to uh, Saussure, I mean, Ferdinand or Ferdinand de Saussure, who is defined this, the idea between the signifier and the signifier. Okay? And this is all about uh, chapter one, I hope. 
uh, I made it so far clear. And thank you very much indeed. Hello. Yes, yes, Mr. Akram. On the last, uh, yes. all clear. Thank you for this uh, clear uh, explanation. Thank you very Thank much indeed. Thank you all of you. Uh, but uh, because yes, I want to say it clear because I don't like to elongate the speech. I mean, to make it longer, just to cut the long story short. This is what I'm trying to do. Uh, Ms. Doctor, the floor is yours. I would have Salam told you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Akram, for this rich recap for chapter one. Uh, it's my pleasure to meet you, all of you good friends. And uh, this short uh, presentation of chapter two of uh, this uh, precious book, Introducing Translation Studies. Uh, I will uh, speak in short as much as possible because it, uh, we have uh, one hour left before Iftar time. The chapter is mainly about uh, the sense for sense translation versus word to word translation, or in other words, uh, literal versus uh, free translation. Uh, the, this is the main uh, aim of uh, the, ch the chapter two. So I'm going to share uh, some slides. Mm. The, as I said, this chapter is uh, about uh, the debate uh, on the two pools of translation, literal versus uh, free translation. And there is, uh, there is uh, some selected uh, areas of translation from the Western European, from the Chinese translation, from the Arab world translation of the, Abbasi period. Where is my PowerPoint? Mm. Is uh, uh, do you see my screen? Yeah, we see your screen. The main area is, uh, I'm trying to share my screen. What's wrong with me? Yeah, um, just click on share it and then, uh, because- You, I believe you allow sharing. No, uh, you are allowed to share because you are the far, yes. far host. Our, our main area is uh, about the first uh, example of the European, of the European community example of the translation of the sacred text. It is uh, Cicero versus Germo approach. Uh, the doctor, first sorry one. for interruption, but can, can you zoom it out? Yes. Zoom the screen because we cannot see the whole screen on the fall. I mean, I'm click on the slides, click on the slides, and then it will be zoomed out. Click on? Yeah. 
because be, you began sharing, but it's not that clear on the slides themselves. I think they appeared in the beginning. Uh, I mean, the slide that showed the- uh, Yeah, yeah, from one up to 16. Yeah, yes, that's, yes. that's good. And then it disappeared. Yes, now yeah, that's why. That's so why. Now I, uh, I, I made the trial before I, I come here. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, that's very good. I'm oh, sorry for this. No, no, it's okay, so, it's okay. So in short, uh, the text is, uh, the chapter is about transition theory before the 20th century. Uh, we have uh, the key concept, the world for world or literal versus uh, sense for sense or free debate, the importance of translation of the sacred text, the visualization of the vernacular Luther and German Bible, uh, the influence of Dryden and the trial of metaphor, metaphrase, paraphrase, imitation, attempts at more systemic systemic uh, perspective approach from Jolet and Tyler. Uh, uh, I, I'm not sure if I can pronounce it correctly. Uh, okay, yeah, his, his name Can is, you help? Uh, Clement, Sch Clement Yeah, he's a German. Uh, okay, Schlimmer. Schler, Schler, uh, oh, I will not pronounce the S. <laughs> yeah, the S, uh, the S, uh, C H is sh sh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, like the Italiano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. uh, uh, A yeah. separate language of translation and respect for the foreign. The vagueness of the early terms used to describe translation. And this key text. Uh, I will skip it. The aim of this chapter is to focus on the central recurring theme of word for world and sense for sense translation, a debate that com dominated much of the transition theory in the uh, in what Newmark 1981 called the pre-linguistic period of transition. Uh, it's the theme which Suzanne Bersnick seems as emerging again and again with different degree of emphasis in, the, in accordance with different concept of language and communication. So this is the main, main issue. Our main issue is the ma matter of, uh, is it literal or free translation? And there is a selected text to, to uh, denote this debate. Uh, we have the world for world uh, or sense for sense or, or literal uh, versus uh, free translation in the Western European world is uh, was well seen in uh, Cicero and versus Germo approach. We have the Roman rhetoric and politician Marcus uh, Cicero outlined his approach to translation the, the translation in optimal general or term of I, I think this is Latin. I don't know what is it. I think it's um, uh, some book. Uh, he said, and I didn't translate them, and I didn't translate them as interpreter, but as an orator, keeping the same ideas and forms, or as one might say, the figures of thought but in, land, in language which conform to our usage. And in so doing, I didn't hold necessary to render word for word, but I preserved the general style and force of the language. So, so what do you think Cicero's approach is? Is it a free translation or a literal translation? Oh, my audience, I'm asking questions. Yeah. What yes. does this represent? Yes. What he said. Is it a free translation or a literal translation? Yeah. This is yeah, what yeah. he did for the sacred text of the Bible. 
the so let's go to the word interpreter he uh, interpreter is meant to be here translator or mediator uh, while orator is is a person who produces speech that move the listener rhetoric however in the uh, adult uh, point out that in ancient Rome it was the low social status of status of interpreter, a mediator, various of various kinds. So at that time the word interpreter is a mediator. It could be a translator or any kind of mediator. Uh, that was uh, this period because of lack of education. This then lead, led to a limited and pedantic understanding and to an intelligent world toward Latin style. So the word here, when he said interpreter, he said like it is a mediator. It's not necessary to mean a translator. Uh, or he, he said he, that he is like an orator, not uh, inter, uh, interpreter. So he is like changing the style or making free form of translation. The this fragment of word for word translation came from others as well as such as the poet Horace, who, in short but famous passage from his Poetica, and the line the goal of producing uh, aesthetically pleasing and creative poetic text in the Latin on the uh, target language. This attitude had great influence in the succeeding century. So the other, the other uh, pool of uh, translation approach was Set Germus sense for sense approach. Set Germus, the most famous of all Western translators, cited the authority of Cicero's approach to justify his own Latin version and uh, translation of the Christian Bible, later become, became known as the Latin Vulgate. Set Germus revised. Uh, and corrected early Latin translations of the Greek Next New Testament, the account of Jesus' life. For the Old Testament, he decided to return to the original Hebrew. This was a decision that was controversial to those who maintained the divine inspiration for the Greeks. Night, septo, septo gained. Septo gained. The commonly accepted. I don't know if I believe I didn't pronounce it also correctly. Can you do? Can you help, please, Akram? Yeah. Septo, uh, septo uh, gained or septo uh, gained. Gained. Septo gained. Yeah. Septo gained. The commonly accepted translation of the Old Testament in uh, uh, in the use among Christians. So let us see what uh, Seth Jermus says. He defi defined him, uh, defends himself against the accusation of incorrect translation and described his strategy in the following terms. Now, I not only admit, but freely announce that in translating from uh, Greek, ex uh, except, of course, in the case of Holy Scripture, where even the, uh, the syntax contains a mystery, I render not word for word, but sense for sense. Translation. For, for now, I, uh, I not only admit, but freely announce that in translating from the Greek, except, of course, for the case of Holy, the holy scripture uh, were, were exception. 
where even the syntax the syntax contains a mystery i render not word for word but sense for sense transition Although some of the scholars uh, argue that these terms have been misinterpreted, the general statement is now usually taken to refer to what came to be known as literal oh, ho, or word for word and free or sense for sense translation. General rejected the word for word approach because by following so closely uh, so by following so closely the form of the uh, source text it produced an observed translation cloaking the sense of the original the sense of the sense for sense approach or the other on the other hand allow the sense or content of the source text to be translated. So we have two pools of translation, the pool of uh, word for word and the pool of uh, sense for sense or free translation. In these pools can, can be seen the origin of both literal versus, literal versus free uh, or forms form versus content debate that had continued until modern time, until our time, is it? Until our time, we have uh, this debate. What do you think, Akram? Uh, yeah, it's very interesting, this area, because right now I'm taking notes regarding this, and I thought that I, I shouldn't have to complete the, the, the chapter, so we need to stop here and discuss this, because there are many uh, huge information to be discussed about this area, like form and content, uh, free translation, uh, just as a translator, you need to translate the meaning as it should be, or just as a matter of rendering the meaning and, uh, or the form. Uh, you have to be to cling to the words, words by word, and this is unacceptable. And then there are subtitles, uh, like for example, if I'm a, a poet, the a poetic translation, like the Jahil, when yes, they think that, have, yeah, they are very good. Also, in mind the translation of uh, the ancient Medina of uh, some Mclaurage uh, done by uh, Imran Al-Aqib. It is uh, an example of this free translation. If you take the first line, uh, it was an ancient marina and he stops one of three. Sad uh, Imran translated as Yafanun Qad Jawar al Bahra Fatan Hikabu Dahri Madat Baina Yadehi Haina Mastaukafa Shahsan Abiran Wamada Wamada Duna Refi Kaihi Ilehi. And I met Sad uh, Imran and he said this word Yafan which means so old. He tried to express the one word ancient because the word ancient is like, uh, uh, it's a very rich word. So he said, يَفَنٌ قَدْ جَاوَرَ الْبَحْرَ فَتَنْ حِقَبُ الدَّهْرِ مَضَتْ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ to translate the word ancient. So you can say, if, if you want to make a word for what you can say, an atiq or qadim, atiq. Can say atiq, uh, uh, but he said all this uh, uh, crowd of words to express the feeling or the sense of the word, the, the sheds hidden in the word uh, ancient. So we can uh, now move to the next point in the Chinese world, or uh, if there is any, uh, I, I, I want to, if there is any explanation or uh, we continue. Okay, uh, I, we have the, I, As for me, Kosta, uh, you have to continue and then- I bet uh, continue the because uh, we have yes, very limited we'll, time. Yeah, we'll discuss more and more. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We have the early Chinese and Arabic discourse. Translation. This uh, in the 
the same. It represents the same. It is examples for the same pools of translation, uh, which is considered here that this uh, uh, this versus Germo's debate uh, extended to the other cultures or can be found in other cultures. The same. Uh, especially if we consider the uh, ancient translation in, the, in China and other world. Uh, so let's have a glance on the Chinese translation of the Buddhist Sutra from the Sanskrit. It, uh, this translation uh, consists of three phases. The first phase is to present the word for word rendering adhering closely to the source language syntax. And uh, uh, the rationale behind this was maybe not to only the lack of bilingual ability among the translation forum participants, but also to the belief that the sacred world of the enlightened should not be trampled with. In addition to the to the control target language syntax translation or trans, transliteration transliteration was used very liberally maybe of, of the because of the difference the phonics difference between the two languages with the result that the translations were fairly incomprehensive and understandable to anyone without theological ground this is the first phase followed literal translation and, and it lead to a misunderstanding or an under, un understandable translation. The second phase of uh, translation in the Chinese world, it swung towards uh, many contemporary Chinese scholars uh, to uh, make like polishing, polishing and rewriting of the previous translation. And it uh, smoothened the uh, older text into the target language. So, to, so as to fit the usage of the target language and the draft were polished, giving them a high literacy uh, quality. And uh, we have, if I can pronounce it correctly, Kama or Komarai, Komarajva was, created, was uh, credited as a pioneer of this approach of the first of the second uh, phase, which moves uh, forward from the world to world approach. Uh, but in some extreme cases, the uh, polishing might be, they might make. Uh, over polishing so that the text, the, uh, the result was the text affected and the, its meaning and the message conveyed was not as uh, desired. And we have the third phase of Chinese translation of the Buddha Sutras dominated by Xuan or Xuan Zhang, Xuan Zhang who, had, uh, who had excellent command of both Sanskrit and Chinese, and who adv uh, advocated that, uh, that the attention should be paid to the style. So he has command of language and he has uh, directed the attention to to make attention to the style, different style between the different language of the original text. Literally polishing was not to be applied to simple and plain source text. If the source text is, is simple and you can convey it so simply, why should I make more polishing or making uh, giving it other depth? Uh, he also make rules. He made rules uh governing the translation uh, and these were adopted by many of his successors uh, this 
this Chinese uh, translation has its uh, effect on the uh, on the debate of world for world or sense for self transition and the vocabulary of Hong Kong and Poland's description of such show that the influence of modern Western transition terminology also affect the argument being similar to sisters and St. Germans pools described in the previous uh, paragraph. This is especially because of there is there are alternative transition for the term uh, literally yi yi the Chinese use the yi yi if if if, if it is correct also I'm, I'm concerned about <laughs> this these words I'm, um, I'm trying no, my best to fine. pronounce it fine. forget yeah. about it yi yi <laughs> yeah hal hal minkum ayuha nas man ya'rif as-siniya if any one of you know Chinese <laughs> yee, to, to help in this yi, uh, so it, it means the translation, translation of meaning. Mm. The translation choices were expounded in the the preface in the preface to the these texts. Perhaps the most influential being by the religious leaders Doa, uh, who directed an extensive translation program of Buddhist sutras, Buddhist sutras, sutras. These prefaces consider the dilemma which ever face the translation. He he considers that translation into Chinese language faces a dilemma uh, that can be summarized in uh, basic points or losses, call them shiban, shiban or losses. The, if you want to translate, can be summarized, this losses can be summarized into these five points. Uh, coping with the flexibility of the Sanskrit syntax by reversing to the standard Chinese order. So there is syntactic uh, difference between the Sanskrit and uh, Chinese. As we have, we have uh, the translating from, from English to Arabic. We have to reverse the uh, sentence order. Uh, otherwise we will bring some, some un understandable text. The enhancement of the literaliness of the source text to adopt to the an, an elegant Chinese style. So there's also different in the style between the Sanskrit and the Chinese language. Uh, the omission of repetitive exclamation because uh, the source text contain a lot of repetition, like maybe they use it like in prayers or uh, which do not fit the Chinese language. So they have, they need to omit it. The reduction in the paratextual commentaries that accompany the charge text. So in the source text, there's many commentaries or explanatory notes. Uh, so they, uh, and, the, and their translations, they, know they need to omit it because it, uh, it has the same meaning or it's just expanding the meaning of the source text. So they need to omit or reduce the reduction or restructuring to ensure more logical and linear discourse. This is like uh, like after the brief. What what is what happened in the proofreading after finishing the translation? You need to go uh, uh, through the whole text and uh, restructure or uh, render it uh, some logical to cope with the target language. This are, these are the five losses they uh, mentioned. This man uh, mentioned in uh, uh, facing the translation into Chinese language, Doa, his name, I believe. He also listed three factors or buoy or difficulties 
he he this is the also there is difficult there is losses five losses and three difficulties three difficulties uh, that necessitate special care uh the directing of the message to a new audience and the sanctity of the source text was and the special status of the source text themselves as the community work of so many followers these points were to influence uh, the work of the great coach and translators and the commentator Kumar, Kumar Rajva and those who followed. This was about the, uh, that was about the translation uh, uh, in the Chinese for the Bodhi Sutra, which, as I mentioned, it uh, consists of three phases the world forward and uh, some intermediate phase and the more concise and somehow free uh, systemic translation with uh, some rules uh, are laid down for translation with uh, uh, losses mentioned and the difficulties mentioned. Uh, then we come to our the example of our Arab world translation activity in the Abbas period. Uh, also, it has the same uh, the same pools, the free or the literal versus the free style. The first method, method uh, the world for world was associated with Johanna bin al -Bitriq. I'm I'm saying it in Arabic. Uh, but if, by the way, if I'm addressing a foreign conference, if the audience is not are not Arab, what have I what should I do? How can I read it? I'm asking this. I want really, I want to say, I said, I said, one Johanna with the Ibn al Bitrik, like yes, this. Of course, of course, you should mention it as it is. You are not yes. saying to say, Johanna, I'm not going to say Johanna the penguin. <laughs> okay, Johanna Ibn al Bitrik, as, as they can, as they usually read it. And, yeah, uh, as it is, they all are, they, uh, this is the right uh, uh, transcription. For, for the all Greek Arabic. I mean, for the. Yes, for all the Arabic, I read in Arabic. Yeah, yeah. And this is uh, As I said. It easier for non Arab to, uh, to read them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the first method associated with Johanna ibn al Bitriq and ibn Naim al Hamsi was highly literate, consisted of translating they, what did they do that word for word. For every Greek word, there should be an equivalent Arabic word, or otherwise they will borrow the same Greek word. And what uh, the result uh, that this translation word for word proved to be unsuccessful and was later revised. Proved to be unsuccessful because you, you, if when you follow word for word, you will affect the, the semantic structure of the language and everything. So the second, the second uh, phase of translation, which revised the word for word translation, was associated with Ibn Ishaq, Hunayn Ibn Ishaq, and Al Jawahiri. Uh, it's considering translating sense for sense, creating fluent target text, which convey the meaning of the original without distorting the target language. I believe uh, whenever there is a mastering of the language and the culture, usually the result will be uh, smooth and easy to understand translation. So the terminology used in this uh, uh, in this era, in this Abbasi era, also affected by the European. Uh, classical Western European discourse of translation of the two pools of uh, word for word or literal versus uh, uh, free translation. Although, of course, in the Arabic uh, world, they have their way, but to consider the two pools, it's the two pools of translation. 
So on uh, the the transition activities affected the thought, the thought of the Arab world, and they used uh, translation. Uh, if we speak about the second or the second style, the uh, it create they create a creative translation that uh, affected the expansion of science and thought and become the foundation of course with other elements of the Islamic culture, both in conceptual and terminological level. And this was this increase of, uh, so what happened that there is, you will hear the use of new Arab terminologies rather than the translation or using the trans, rather than the translation of the Greek term. So the, the uh, translation of the Greek uh, sciences, especially philosophy and medicine, uh, enriched the Arabic language with uh, new derivative terms. They, because the, uh, the nature of Arabic language, of course, it, it allowed this. Uh, For Gautas, writing from the historical perspective, he has an, uh, his view rejected simplistic geographical explanation for the shift of in transition style in the Arab world. Uh, on the, in the Abbasi uh, period, organized translation program, he emphasized that the social and political and ideological factors are involved. He contended that the wealth of texts increased the uh, the demand for translator and this increased demand for translator in turn led to their greater professionalization and improved knowledge of Greek. Uh, for him, the divergence of style should be explained not in an evolution but as arising from different translation complex. Uh, which open independently for different texts. These include translation of medical writing of Hippocrates and philosophy, philosophical work of Aristotle. Okay, this is in short the translation in the Arab world. And for the for uh, I have the other point of uh, about Luther and his their activities. Uh, I believe I will skip it now to give you uh, to continue the other three points so as to uh, manage our time. So can you please uh, continue, Akram? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you very much, indeed. Well, I have a process made hot, مقدر. يعني يذكر فيشكر. ما شاء الله الله. There is no single word to be said. Allah, it, it, it is a very simple effort. And uh, as you see, yani, um, even uh, some some of the words I cannot pronounce it correctly. No, it is okay. It's so fine. That... It's a uh, universal <laughs> phenomena. I mean, I know I'm not to tackling and mastering the whole languages. I mean, but in the end, I mean, well done. And I want to hear from the the boys in the class today. بعد ذاك أنا عندي تعليقات ليس يعني لأنه المواضيع ما شاء الله هي أو overlapping كده أو intertwined أو يعني interrelated كده زي متداخلات فلكن نسمع من الشباب وبعد ذاك نعلق ليس آه السلام عليكم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله دكتور شباب شكرا جزيلا thank you أكرم and thank you دكتور كوثر يعني let me يعني before I start uh, say hello for everyone here uh, 
uh, in this uh, very interesting session. And uh, I attended by accident, by the way, and according to the invitation of Akram Yani uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, really, it, uh, it is my pleasure yani, to be with you in this very fruitful discussion. Uh, and I regard it as very fulfillment yani, when we share or discuss and learn from each other as usual. Yani, this is like something yani, as usual we need it uh, in this time. Uh, first of all, you know that, and we need, when we came across a book, when we came across a book, we need to build knowledge in very critical frame. However, it is not an easy matter to build it. Why? Because it is important for us as readers, and you know, readers, it is very important to take in account every aspect in the book. We may not book in a translation, and you know, every aspect in translation, and to deal with it critically or comparatively. And you know, if the last thing to read critically, and it is very important for us as readers, not only just to project, but also we need to inform present information in very, uh, yani very, very clear, very clear framework. Well, how did you say that? I'm going to read the introduction according to Kouser and Akram. Kitab in translation, it is not, يعني, حاجة, يعني, easy يعني, to be covered. يعني, حتى, or, or, aspects or, to, to cover the series. And the Kouser, the series of translation. And according to my experience with teaching the rest of and applied linguistics, so how in the applied linguistics and a broader area of the umbrella and the fear of the translation. A translation, a series of the easy to be covered or to be discussed in a way that is very complicated, very complicated series. So let me, in this area, to advocate your points, Akram and Ustaz Kouser, for the definition of translations, in chapter one, in the real, in the real, in the real, in the definition of translation, and it was a very, very good introduction, and in the case of the seminar. So, first of all, let me, to add to what you presented, or what you introduced, and the translation that mediates between language and society and literature. And then three, three, three area, three parts. And then language, society, and literature. And you cannot يعني, discuss translation uh, in a part of this uh, language and society and literature. Three aspects or three parts. Uh, uh, also, I am going to say that I am going to translation and إحنا, من محتاجين كهي برانش من linguistics أو applied linguistics نحن محتاجين لشنو إن هي representation لل cultural barriers يعني كلها لازم نعمل ال cultural barriers ما 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 نحملها إحنا فسنا نعمل مع translation في 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 trend ك trend كان new trend ولا كان هو ما ما recent حاجة قديمة في من من في 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 applied linguistics وفي حاجة برضو أنا عايزة أجيب عندها في translation إنه بيعمل لنا دائما attention بيعمل attract لنا our attention towards many disciplines و many methods من ال methods اللي طبعا هي especially بنخش في contrastive analysis contrastive analysis between two languages يعني وهم يعني two اللي بيحصل بينات و how to translate or to interpret from one language to another يعني we have to to tackle on this the last point the last points I want to 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 يعني to share here, as um, I did, and you discussed the session, that the role of translation studies. Diamond, we talk about English. We have 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 through many tools, I mean, there many tools of translation. When I started, I mean, I was in series of articles, I mean, I was content, I mean, I got in the tools of that, I mean, the semantics, I mean, the meaning. There are many things that I mean, I got in the tools of that, I mean, I got in the tools of that, I mean, I got in the tools of that, I mean, I got in the tools of that, I mean, I got in the tools of that, I mean, I got in the tools of that, I mean, I got in the tools of that
فهي صح عملتي ترانسميشن للنولج يعني كلها وبتعمل لنا بروتكتر للكالتشرال هيريتيج وسنشالي للديفلوبمنت لكل الحاجات اللي في الجلوبال ان كانت في الايكونوميك ولا في البوليتيكال او وات ايفر فذيس از ماني ماني بوينتس جاست اي ونت تو ادفوكيت او تو سبورت يعني اكوردنج تو يور انتروداكشن يعني هي كانت فيري ات واز فيري يوزفول انتروداكشن استاذ اكرم يعني ثانك يو انا جيت يعني ما جيت يعني جيت انه هيست وما جيت ريدي يعني تو تو ريد ذا بوك بيفور اند تو ديسكاس ذا مين بوينتس لكن ان شاء الله يعني I promise later, inshallah, to, 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 to come across these chapters and to, 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 to read them deeply. It doesn't have to read deeply in order to discuss يعني, critically. We don't have the time to criticize. We don't have the time to read it. We don't have the time to read it. So we can get to the main point that is our addition to the human knowledge. We are as readers, or even the people who are in the community, the participants who share us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much indeed for this five touching words and comments. So, uh, I, you left me speechless uh, regarding this area because you talk a lot, but uh, this is will open really many doors to come for uh, talking about these areas. Uh, Mr. M, uh, I, it's not uh, seen here for me, but you are highly welcome. السلام عليكم ورحمه الله. ااا uh, معكم مكي بشير. Uh, I'm happy to be with you today again. And thank you for everybody. Sorry, my name has been changed to him. I don't know who did that. Uh, fortunately, they didn't put a cat or uh, something. <laughs> or, or a monkey. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Mackey. Hello, Dr. Mackey. Nice Hello. to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you also, Dr. Shifa. Thanks a lot. Thank you. I was wondering, <laughs> where is Makki today? Allah, it's such a pleasure to find you. Thank you, Allah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I, I would like just very briefly to thank uh, Akram and uh, uh, Kauter for continuing the discussion of the book and for presenting to us uh, an overview of the second chapter, which has been very helpful and very interesting and uh, uh, comprehensive of all the elements in the, in the chapter. And it showed out that the discussion, uh, a lot of the, uh, as, uh, as Kauser mentioned, uh, very often translators uh, they argue whether this is a literal translation or this is the, uh, the, the, the accurate translation or not the, or not the accurate translation and the question of equivalence and et cetera. And she showed us that this discussion is not new. It has been going on for centuries and in all, in all parts of the world from the uh, old Greek and Latin tradition, translation of the Bible to the Chinese tradition and to the Arabs in Beit al-Hikmah and uh, uh, she gave the examples of uh, the schools of Hunayn ibn Ishaq and uh, Yohanna ibn al Patriq, etc. So that is very interesting and it gives us a basis when we discuss these terms to, to know that it's not something new, it's something that has been always there and it will continue to translate us, will continue to argue about it. And now, with the, with the introduction of translation technology, this, is, this will become even more, uh, more debated because whether whether the, the, the machine could go beyond the literal meaning and find the, 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 the real sense, the real intention of the authors and, and manage to, whether the machine can translate, uh, for example, poetry as she gave us the example of the ancient mariner or not. So all these are, que are, are, are questions, are, 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 are old questions and they are still current and still being discussed. Uh, just a comment on uh, Dr. Shifa's uh, comment on Dr. Shifa's comment. <laughs> I think I agree with her uh, that uh, the, the, it, it, we, we, we need to go beyond the, the just presenting the, 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 the text and uh, uh, connect whatever we, we read or whatever we discuss with broader area. But I also, I think uh, because she was not uh, with us last time, uh, I'll give her uh, a background that the organizers of these uh, seminars 
agreed to discuss each chapter at a time of the book. So all what she mentioned, I think falls in other chapters of the book and it could be uh -huh, discussed uh -huh, later. Uh -huh, yes, yes. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. That is why uh, it is better because, because for the benefit of the time, we cannot discuss the whole world of translation studies, even whether translation studies is part of uh, applied linguistics or not, that is debatable among translation uh -huh. studies scholars. Uh, because some of them consider translation studies to be a separate interdisciplinary field that benefit from linguistics and so many other fields. So, uh, so, 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 so we, without ignoring all what you mentioned, uh, it, it, it was important to be focused on the, 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 uh, the, 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 the sessions uh, topic or theme. And just a suggestion for, uh, for, for uh, Akram in the future, uh, in addition to sending the, <laughs> the invitation earlier, to mention what is the focus of each session so that people who come for the first time would know what we are going to discuss and discuss join this. in the discussion. It's and all, of, of course, it, it would be all, always better to remind people to read the chapter in advance so they come yeah. prepared uh, to add mm -hmm. information and to, to help with, uh, with the discussion. So thank you. Thank you very much for everybody. And, uh, uh, thank you. Looking forward to it. You're welcome. You're welcome. There's no single word to be said. Yeah. A lot of <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Maki. Thank you very much indeed. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, Thanks thank to you. you. Thanks to you. Yeah, both you of you. You're welcome. Uh, yes, that's it. Does anybody? Ah, uh, Mani, Hisham, uh, Dr. Sama, he's a newcomer. Dr. Osama Khalifa. Akram, uh, how are you? How's everybody? <laughs> and hello, everyone over there. I'm, I'm, hello, just Dr. I'm, just in, I'm just enjoying this nice presentation and the comments from Dr. Shifa and Dr. Maki. And uh, <laughs> I, I would also like to, to extend my Gratitude to Dr. Rezena for the nice presentation. Actually, I'm not I'm not a man of translation, as you know. But I <laughs> me too, me to, too, <laughs> Dr. Osama. <laughs> Actually, Dr. Or a counter, you know, to, or a counter yeah. for the presentation. <laughs> yes. Uh, but thank you all. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for tuning in. I mean, for joining us here. And I know this is mean a lot. Yeah, it means a lot when coming here, when showing up. Okay. Uh, but who knows? You might be a translator someday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, you know. Uh, may, may I add something? Uh, just a quick comment about uh, uh, closer questions yeah. on whether to say. <laughs> Uh, Johanna Ibn Patrick, or do you to pronounce it as you pronounce it in Arabic when you speak to uh, foreigners or to speak to uh, non-Arab speakers? Uh, actually, this could be a part of a heated discussion in translation, what they call uh, domestication and foreignization. So whether you bring the foreign to the, to, 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 to the readers or to, to the audience, uh, as it is in the, in, the, in the original, or whether to domesticate it and make it like uh, uh, the, 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 you change the pronunciation or you change uh, so to make it understandable to them. Uh, and this goes not only to the names, but to many other concepts. In my own view, I prefer for the names to keep, to pronounce them as they are pronounced in the original language. Because Part of the work of a translator is to educate people. And you don't educate people by saying the name in, a, uh, 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 in an incorrect way. For example, the name Muhammad. So if I speak to non-speakers, I wouldn't say Muhammad because they say Muhammad. Or if the French, for example, in the past, they used to write Muhammad Mahomet. So I wouldn't say Mahomet, just to go with the way they pronounce it. I would say it, Muhammad, even if I speak in English. Yes, this is what I prefer, Allah. 
Yeah, and uh, and for any Arab name, if I speak in, in English, in French, in any language, I would pronounce the name exactly as it's pronounced in Arabic, in, 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 in Arabic or any other original language. Because, uh, and, uh, because these are names and the names are not translated, that is uh, for fact. They are, of course, you can translate them to write them in a way that the, the, the alphabet of the other language uh, allows you. Uh, they pronounce them as they can. They should try to pronounce them correctly, but if they cannot, that is, their, uh, th that is acceptable. But for I, as, as uh, know someone who knows uh, the exact pronunciation, I should stick to that. That is my view. This is a very good view, yeah, which very, uh, yeah. uh, make me follow uh, my uh, current team pronouncing the Arab name, the Arab name as they are. Thank you, Dr. Maki. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, yes, Dr. Zainab. Yes, uh, uh, so I have some points to, to forward. Uh, the last one came to my mind just um, once uh, uh, Maki uh, mentioned this last remark. And I wanted to say assalamu alaikum, but I didn't want to interrupt his speech. Uh, actually, uh, we should uh, mention, we should say anything in Arabic, and especially names, because they are, of course, untranslatable. Uh, they should be mentioned as they are, because this is an important uh, means to introduce our language to others. And you have no interest to say something to transform it in order to make it more understandable to, to them. No, we have to say it as it is, because like this, we introduce our language, we make, we acquaint uh, people with our language. So it should be said, uh, but I do, I want to emphasize on this point because I want to, to say the same thing. Uh, what I want to say from the start uh, is to thank Ustaz uh, Kautar deeply uh, for this um, vast, for this comprehensive um, pr uh, presentation uh, that she, she has done today. Um, thank you so much, Ustaz Kautar. And this is uh, so much considerable effort uh, from your part. And uh, also, I, I'd like to refer to the point of uh, Dr. Sheikh, also, I, I really uh, like her uh, her interference uh, intervention because uh, I think uh, she has uh, referred to some uh, lively points. Um, although she she was not uh, she didn't read the the chapter like me, uh, and I I do admit and I confess that I didn't read the chapter before coming to the session, and this is wrong, we should all uh, read the, the chapter before coming to, to the session in order to make it as fruitful, as useful, as beneficial as possible. Uh, because if we don't have a background of the, of the chapter, it is of no interest uh, to come and attend the session. Uh, okay, and I'm telling this to myself, by the way, before telling it to the others. But uh, inshallah, from uh, next time on, we will take it much more seriously. We will read the, the coming chapter or the particular chapter which will be discussed in the particular uh, session. Uh, this is uh, an important uh, point, uh, which was mentioned also by, by Maki. Uh, but still, I have liked so much the session today. And inshallah, for, as I said, I promise for next time, even me, I will work more professionally, uh, preparing myself uh, from the start. Um, uh, even as a mustama, I mean, it is not necessary that because we are directing the, the session, uh, even just in order to attend it properly, we have to be well prepared. And also, uh, I was so happy about all the information that was mentioned uh, because it reminds me with uh, uh, some uh, you know, areas of information that we have come across uh, during our uh, studies in translation. Uh, I was so happy to feel that I have the information again refreshing uh, in my mind. Sorry, uh, um, 
so sorry that I have taken so much of time from the others uh, for this uh, uh, intervention. Thank you very much for everyone, uh, for you, Saz Akram, and lots of thanks for Saz Kausar, for all the colleagues, and uh, inshallah, let's hope for the best uh, for these seminars of Ustaz Akram. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, indeed, Dr. Dana, you are for welcome. these quiet, uh, touching words and uh, nice comments. Thank you very much, indeed. Uh, does anybody okay. got question or comment regarding uh, this? Because uh, I'm going to sum up uh, these areas because I have so many uh, Mr. Comments. Akram, just please. Just so I want uh, to make a little comment, can you? I have only 10 minutes left before iftar. And uh, oh, really? I, I, will, I will join. You can continue your discussion. Oh. I will join. I, I, my, I, the computer will be open and near me. And just so I want to put some items on the table. Oh. <laughs> so yeah. I, I, some of the discussion, I, miss, I may miss some of, this, of the discussion. So. Okay. okay. Thank you for this valuable time, for this very good time. All, all of the participants. They have their iftar before us. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, iftar is uh, Yes, uh, I need to listen from the others uh, participants if yes. there's any idea that they want to share. If they don't, because uh, uh, Kauka mentioned many uh, outstanding points that we can point it. Like uh, the word creator, translator, um, tonal languages versus uh, international languages, and the matter of uh, intertranslation, uh, int uh, literal translation, or transliteration. Sorry. So when you are translating or rendering from uh, tonal languages like uh, Japanese, Chinese, and so forth, and uh, this from the uh, uh, South Asian countries. Uh, as well as the Roman alphabet, I mean the, the uh, international languages. Uh, uh, the additionally to the Old Testament uh, translation, uh, we have Jacobson, we have uh, uh, Martin Luther King translation, and we have uh, King James translation. So all this kind of translation from the Old Testament and the New Testament and the tears, uh, as you mentioned, that they, there was a debate. I mean, they were inter, uh, controversial. They were controversial because there's a controversy about talking uh, whether to adopt uh, a form translation or a content translation, or in other words, uh, literal translation from free translation. So these are the ideas that I would like to uh, raise because it, it will raise many uh, questions uh, additionally, there's uh, Sanskrit, I mean, the, the all Indian language, I mean, how it can be shown at that time, and the, the art translated, like um, uh, Ishaq and Ibn uh, Zafriyak and all, all of them, and in the Abbasid period, because that was the, the, the flourish uh, era of translation. When you are a translator, when you translate in, in, in a word, uh, or in return of your own translation, they give you a, a gold, right? Uh, am I right? At that time? Yes, say again. Am I, am I clear? Say again. Yeah. Say it again, Akram, please. What did you say? In the, 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 uh, the Abbasid time, I mean, the, the era of uh, Umayyad and Abbasid time, uh, if you are a translator, in return, uh, uh, having translated many translations, in return they will give you gold mm -hmm. as a reward for your own translation. The payment, so, yeah. The question is, <laughs> do we have such things or not? And can uh, ask Dr. Maki. Ask Dr. Maki. <laughs> yeah, he's an yeah. expert yeah. in translation. You can yeah. ask him. And even the translation of sutra. And the word sutra is uh, an old word. I mean, it's not an antique word, but it, it's used for a lot. And nowadays, we tend not to use it for a lot, but we prefer to use uh, proverbs or sayings. So these are the, the issues that have been said by uh, Kota, and we are delighted that she mentioned them, and sense for sense. So uh, there's a question here at some itself, or uh, postulate itself. Can machine translation 
or uh, does machine translation will have the sense because we are talking about sense and right now we are talking about the era of uh, machine translation and the technological advancement of translation and so forth so the the sense can they sense or can we think that they might have this or will they have this uh, uh trait so these are areas to be discussed later and the last point uh, uh, that to be mentioned uh, yeah, I, I prepared some ideas, some notes about the, the scholars. You mentioned them like Doulet, like Eugene uh, Nider, and like uh, Dryden and so forth. But because of time, uh, we are about to close. So if there's any question, there's any comment, if there's anything, I'm happy to hear yours, your voice. Yes, uh, Akram, please, before I leave. Uh, let me ask you if is it possible to remind us in a short or in a brief the main points discussed by Dr. Kouser, please, before I depart, because it's yeah. time for kitchen. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, very... it's time for kitchen. <laughs> and I do appreciate yeah. this. Uh, yes, yeah, in brief, of... please, the main yeah. points. The main on. points she tackled it was about the translation, and translation yeah. at that time, uh, the earliest, the earliest uh, series, of, uh, series of translation or theory yeah. uh, yeah. can be divided into many, but and hi historical about, background, yeah? Do, yeah. do you want to say that? Yes, yeah, it is historical, historical background, background about, yeah, about yeah, the theories yeah. of translation. Yeah, okay. Yes, uh -huh. Exactly. They were divided mm -hmm. into two categories: the free okay. translation uh, versus the content translation. The, the form mm -hmm. and content or uh, word by word translation mm -hmm. uh, and uh, versus uh, sense for sense translation. So uh, word for word or sense for sense. So which oh, is what? Yes. Because at that time in the early eras in the Apartheid and the Roman, uh, the, the, the old Roman translation like King uh, Martin Luther King uh, in the early 60s and uh, the Bible, we, we had the, the old, the New Testament, which is called here, uh, the New Testament, yeah, uh, Super uh, Gen, this is the Greek translation. Uh, at, at that time, uh, people tend to use uh, word for word translation. And the scholars like Dragon, like Dulate, and so forth, even uh, Nida, Eugene Nida, they tend to realize that. This is wrong. This is uh, that was unsuccessful translation. When you are translating word for word translation, so you have to render the meaning. And even the, the Italian slogan when when they were describing the translator as a traitor, because uh, because they were dis uh, discussing and dis uh, talking about the the uh, the deceit of the meaning as it is or as it should be so that's why uh, they describe that as a uh, traitor but the truth is he's not traitor but he has to render the meaning and there's another uh, idea that to be mentioned regarding uh, the translator as an immediator translator mm -hmm. as an immediator he is not an orator because mm -hmm. Orientas, uh, uh, if you uh, date it back to the uh, 60s era, you will know that from um, uh, King Lear, King Lear, no, uh, uh, Caesarian, Caesar, Caesar Hook, there was an Orienta there, okay, in one of the uh, Shakespeare's. So the Orienta has his role uh, is to uh, be good at. Uh, public speaking. He's a good public speaker at the time. But mm -hmm. right now, the translator ha has to encompass all these things to be good at uh, speaking, to render the meaning as it should be, uh, not to, to focus merely uh, uh, or to focus on the, the form, which is the word, but to focus mm -hmm. merely on the content. And this is uh, a very tough, mm -hmm. if I may uh, succeed in fulfilling the, the aim. Thank you. Yeah, you are Thank most you, welcome. You are warmly welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Does anybody have any idea or yes. if, if there's anything to share? Uh, because uh, you do know that sharing is caring. When you do share, it does mean that you do care, right? Yeah. Mm.
Thank you, Akram. Thank you yeah. for all of you. Thank and good you. to see you all. Thank you very and good much. to see good good to see Osama with us here. Yeah, Allah. Thank you, Osama. Thank you, Osama. Thank you, Osama. Allah barik fiik. Nice, nice to hear from you, from the Karashifa and everybody there. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, everybody. And, thank yeah. you all. Good to yeah. meet. Uh, thank you very uh, much indeed. Good, yeah. good to meet at different venues and different <laughs> uh, platforms. Activities <laughs> and. <laughs> Don't forget that we are in the sea with you, Dr. Mackey. We want to dive I, I, deeply with you. I, I, I will be in the sea with you. We are in the sea with you, really, Allah. Even if you don't know, you have to develop, uh, uh, swimming, uh, develop uh, incredible swimming skills. <laughs> <تصفيق> والله انا الليلة يعني 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 سعيدة جدا يعني حقيقة الله يسلمك اني التقيكم في 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 مبحث عن ترانسليشن انا بحبه وما متخصصة فيه ولكن حتعلم منكم الكثير شاكرا لكم لانه اتس تايم فور ذا كيتشن يعني جود جود افطار فور ايفري بودي اند دونت فريد ان شاء الله فور يو فور جيت اس دور بريير ان شاء الله اكرم كوسر دكتورة زينب ثانك يو بس بس معلش دكتورة الشيف قبل ما تمشي يعني والله ما شاء الله تبارك الله I really loved your I really liked your your remarks about the presentation and it gave me the impression that you are specialized in translation ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله thank you so much دكتور سينا والله I learn from you really from أكرم دكتور مكي دكتور سامي يعني everybody يعني we learn from him يعني no you really not a great how humble يعني والله حاجة يعني it is honor for me by the way دكتورة زينب to be with you and to share you, your experience and to share each other everything in translation and knowledge in general وأنا سعيدة جدا يعني تعلم منكم والدعوة جاتني متأخر وجيت داخلة توش كده حقيقة لا 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 وانا بحب يعني جديد شديد يعني باي ذا واي دكتور مكي وعايزه اتعلم منه كثير في الترانسليشن عارفه انا نفسي في ده تخصص يعني انا عارفه هو مترجم لا يشق له غبار فدي القصه يا دكتور مكي وي وي اول ليرن فروم ايتش اذر دكتور مكي ده شيء خلي دكتور مكي ده شيء خلي قبيله بلا منادع لا اكيد والله احنا سعيدين بيهم دكتور اسامه كيف مع رمضان رمضان كريم الله السلام عليكم Okay, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Nice to meet you, Allah. Thank you. So am I, Allah. So am I. All of you. Have a nice Thank you for all. Thank you, all of you. Thank you very much. Okay. Mr. Akram, Alesh, a last question. A last question. Regarding the timing of our session, and it is stated to be for uh, as one hour and a half or two hours, and the official timing of the, the session. The official time, the, the exact time should be one hour and a half. Uh, oh, well, okay. Yes, yeah, because we have an hour. And what we and take yes, more is extra. Yes, and one full hour for yes, the session. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, uh, Ustaz Akram and everyone. Well, I'm leaving now. Thank, Thank you. you. And Allah, it's such a pleasure, Wallahi Gamma, to be well, with you. Inshallah. See you later, Inshallah, for the next session, Inshallah. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Okay. أكرم كيفك؟ أخبارك صحة يا أخي؟ أنا جاي في أواخر حياة اللحظات مساعدة طيبة ورمضان كريم ما تلاقينا ما تلاقينا والله على الجميع كلهم الحضور وفي ناس تقريبا فاضوا يعني نعم كده أنا <تصفيق> كنت حضور لكن بعيد من المتابعة نعم صح والله 
شوفت حالك ضايق وشلنا عنك والله تمام بخير تمام ان شاء الله كل الناس طيبه كده هنا جاجيه بابو والله بابو جاجيه لا في كده عافية كلام هنا جاجيه سنو سنونك سنو سنونك عافية اه بابو جاجيه نيز انت في ده في كده هنا جدا كا جداية ده ده هرتوم جدا مو جدا مو كرتوم Yes, it's my great pleasure uh, to meet. Uh, I, I do know that I came late, but uh, I'm I'm trying to just say anything, hello, whatever kind of words for all participants, and and I'd like to thank you because you are behind this uh, great job and you always exert great effort. Uh, thank you. Uh, from thank my you. bottom of heart, I'd like to thank you. And all who are behind this program, yeah. it's uh, a valuable session, which will uh, let us know more and gain knowledge. We add every now and then new idea, new information, new knowledge. Yeah, this is true because we are learning from each other mm. and we that, learn from it. each other experience. Yes. So that's why this it, is a place where the platform where people can come yeah. and uh, just uh, exchange their knowledge mutually. Experience, knowledge, every uh, up to date. Yeah. It's a, a, a logo or can be a theme of we learn from each other. Yes, that's right. Okay. Can be yes. a fixed logo. Yeah. Okay, uh, I don't know what uh, I can uh, ask about. The next session will be the, the coming Saturday. Yeah, the next session will not be this day because we work uh, 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 every fortnight. I mean, so uh, twice monthly. Up. But uh, this time, the upcoming days will be uh, the end of Ramadan and again the Eid Fitr. So that's Actually. why we are going to uh, postpone this uh, to after Fitr, after Eid. I see. Yeah. So you you you, you timing you timing after Eid. Yeah. After the Eid. schedule. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, the first. To, yeah. It is. Yeah. Well, well done job. Thank you, thank you, bro. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, even though we have newcomers, uh, are you with us? Are you here? Uh, and Dr. Tahir and uh, Amani Abbas. Hello, can, can, can you hear me well? Am I audible? Yes, you? yes, yes, yes. I am yes. here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm listening to you. Okay. Yes. Uh, what about your own? But here, but here, I am here. But here. But yes, here. I am here. Where are you? And where have you been? <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure to meet uh -huh. you too. Yeah, me also. Uh, you're working on the field of translation. Uh, you think so? Aren't you? Again, please. I didn't listen. Uh, you are working on the field of translation, aren't you? No, I am not going to lie. Again, please. <laughs> أنا قلت أنت بشغالة في مجال ترجمة صح أستاذة فتحية؟ لا 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 أنا شغالة في مجال نيرسينج ما شاء الله ما شاء الله يا أخي والله ده ده كلام جميل وسعيدين إنك تكوني معنا هنا يعني مرحبا بكم والله نايس تو ميت يو إتس ماي بليجر والله بالمناسبة النيرسينج برضه مشروع كويس إذا اشتغلتي عليه هو على الترجمة لأنه الترجمة مواد تكون وفية لأصحاب التخصصات الأخرى نعم يعني في مواد أنا والله لقيت الرابط في الإي ليرنينج نعم جروب بتاع الإي ليرنينج دخلت معاهم وجيت والله من السعودية امبارح بس لقيته إنه شغال فدخلت يعني لكن ما قريت التفاصيل كويس يا أخي تسلمي والله تسلمي أول حي لك والله وفعلا أنا عضو هناك في الإيلانينج 
وفي بعض المجموعات بتاعت الشباب يعني فحسين ديكو والله يا اخي بيشاركنا برضه في اهلا بيكم والله ابريشيت الايفورت اللي انتم بتقدموا فيه وده ما سهل والله تسلمي يا اخي تسلمي ان شاء الله ربنا يقدر لنا كلنا كده نكون ادوات يعني ادوات للتغيير و as we say that يعني change starts from within well, we are going to start from within and then spread out يعني فربنا يقدرنا احنا نكون طول كده ان شاء الله وي هوب سو الله يكرمك يا رب الله يكرمك ان شاء الله ورجعت من السعوديه السودان يعني ولا جيت حاليا؟ اي جيت والله جيت امس كنت في زياره يعني وجيت ما شاء الله ما تخيلت انه ذاته النت كويس وظابط وكده كان no كل فتره الزوم صعب شديد لكن حسي انا مبسوطه انه يعني جوين معاكم سريع <تصفيق> الحمد لله يا احنا موضوع مبسوطين لحضورك والله الله يسلمك الله يسلمك الله يسلمك استاذ اماني اماني عباس ايوه Uh -huh. Yeah, we were eager to hear your comments, I mean, your remarks about what has been said before. Uh, what did you say? Uh, I mean, your remarks. I mean, uh, the, the point that about the presentation or today's presentation with uh, Ms. Uh, Coulter and about the, the, the ideas and the points that she raised them. Uh, I was just 